It has now been more than a week since Modern Warfare 2 launched, so I think now that I have a decent amount of playtime under my belt, it would finally be appropriate to take a look at the launch of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer with a small and simple review. So that is what we are going to be doing in today's video, but before we start, I want to quickly ask that you take one second to demolish that like button as it helps support the channel and get the content out there. Also, if you enjoy Call of Duty in general, this might be the channel for you, so please consider subscribing. So I don't really even know where to start with this review because there is a lot to go over, but I guess I'm just going to start by describing Modern Warfare 2 as being a game with a super fun foundation for what could be an amazing game. That being said, right now I have been having a lot of fun camo grinding, enjoying the different weapons in Modern Warfare 2. The gameplay is really smooth and really fun, but unfortunately those are the only three things there are to enjoy in multiplayer right now. So that is why I'm going to describe the game as being a good foundation, but not a complete product. I can say without a single doubt in my mind that Modern Warfare 2 is the most incomplete Call of Duty game that has ever launched. It's crazy because I remember back when Infinite Warfare launched, people were absolutely crucifying the game for simply the only thing that game lacked was leaderboards and it was just for a couple weeks but now this game launches without leaderboards without barracks without character customizations no combat record statistics no career challenges for goodness sake and it even launched without a hardcore mode and never in the past 15 years of call of duty have we had a game launch without these features and people aren't really saying that much about it i just find it really hard to cut slack when it is something that they have been able to do just fine for 15 years but then for some reason with this launch after having three years of development with a full vision of the game they wanted to make and it launches without staple features for call of duty i really just don't see how this happened or how it could happen and they really just have not acknowledged any of it at all even in their pre-launch blog post they specifically stated that career challenges would be in the game at launch to have fun and to grind but now here we are a week later without them and not a single peep from infinity ward as to why now i will never condone you know being hateful to anyone but i feel like the community should be more vocal about these things because you know we paid between 70 to 100 dollars for this game and it lacks things that they said would be in the game at launch which is a big deal to me at least i just i really don't like the idea of paying full game price for an incomplete game and then them feeding us content that was supposed to be at launch throughout the year and saying it's additional content but anyway moving on from those things we can start looking at the individual aspects of multiplayer first i want to talk about the weapon leveling and camo progression because those are two things that they did change up this year even though it was confusing at first i now kind of appreciate the weapon leveling a little more i like how they make you pretty much use every weapon in the game to unlock weapon platforms it really does help with the issue of everyone using the same weapon all the time at the launch of a call of duty game it kind of forces players to be more diverse in what weapons they're using in order to unlock the full arsenal of weapons which is an overall good thing and weapon leveling goes almost directly along with camo progression they gave us easier camo challenges for this year but it is still going to be a very time consuming grind for people who just play occasionally. But for anyone who plays Call of Duty at a decent pace, they will be able to unlock the mastery camos relatively quickly. I, I do wish it was just a little bit more challenging for the camos. There are already a ton of people unlocking Orion, and I just feel like that really takes away, you know, from the specialness of unlocking mastery camos when it's super easy for everyone to do. I mean, the whole point of camo challenges being challenging is to show off an awesome camo that you use skill to earn. It really just takes away from that sense of accomplishment when when it is easy for everyone to do, in my opinion. Because, you know, like I said, that's, that's what the word challenge means. It's supposed to be a difficult thing to do, so it feels like you actually earn something really cool. But you know, aside from that small issue, overall, I really like the mechanics of the new camo system. When you unlock a weapon's four main camos, they are available on every weapon. I really do like that. Another thing they decided to change this year was the perk system, but this is a really weird one for me. I am always down to see how things can be changed for the sake of improvement, but for the perk system this year, I feel like it really took more steps backwards, if anything. So you get to choose two perks in your perk one slot and those will last you throughout your whole match but then the perk two and perk three slot have to charge up throughout the match you know using playtime kills and objectives and i'm going to be completely honest when i say that i kind of hate the new perk system the reason perks have been a part of our classes since the dawn of create a class 
is to choose carefully what abilities you want to use to kind of decide what your playstyle is going to be for a certain class. But for the first few minutes of matches now, you are robbed of those abilities that you choose using the perk system. Like in the past, when I chose to run Hardline, it's because I wanted Hardline to count toward my streaks for the entire match, not just the second half of the match. Same thing when I pick to run Ghost, I want to be hidden throughout the whole match because I'm choosing Ghost over other things I could be using as a conscious tactical decision. But no, in Modern Warfare 2, your perk 2 and perk 3 slot, you don't get to use it for half the match. And I just really don't see the point of it. There's not really a single positive thing, no improvement that came out of this new perk system. And it really just seems like they changed it just for the sake of saying they changed something. I, I kind of feel like it messes with the flow of the game because obviously like there are crutch perks that everyone's going to be using. And for the first few minutes of the match before people get their crutch perks, everyone's going to be playing like a turtle, just hiding, waiting to get their ghost, waiting to get their cold blooded or whatever. It really, I just feel like it was an unnecessary change and messes with the flow of the game. Another thing they did with this launch that really irks me is once again, the seasonal prestige systems we've had since Black Ops Cold War. Once again, we are getting seasonal prestiges, even though I would bet money that 90 plus percent of the community wants traditional prestige back we don't like having a cap on how much we can do for a certain amount of time within each season of the game i would much rather have it like modern warfare remastered which launched with 20 prestigious plus a thousand levels it's an insane grind that can be completed at your own pace instead of the pace that infinity ward forces you to have with seasonal prestigious and even though i know we are stuck with this system for whatever reason they could have at least given us more than 55 levels I mean, come on. Most everyone had those levels completed within the first week of the game. And for hardcore players like myself, we had it done within the first couple of days of launch. In Vanguard, they at least gave us three prestiges to go through for the preseason, which gave us a little more to grind. But right now, we have so much XP going towards nothing at all. Once you hit level 55, you know, everyone's completing all their gold guns, all their Orion camos. And all of that camo grinding XP everyone's earning right now is legit being wasted just being lost into the void it's gonna make it really harder whenever um seasonal prestiges come around it's gonna make it harder to level up because if you have all your camo challenges completed you know that xp didn't go toward your level whenever the season starts it's just lost it's gone i really don't understand the decision on seasonal prestiges and capping out what level we can get to because like i said it just causes all our xp to go towards nothing with traditional prestiging i would always make sure my xp was pushing me forward within the prestige rings pretty much in every call of duty game from cod 4 up to black ops 4 but now with these past few years of this horrid prestige system it's like XP doesn't matter at all. Leveling just doesn't matter at all because they reset you to level one every season. And that really ruins my incentive, at least to want to grind these levels, because what's the point of getting to level 1000 for one season just for it to be reset? I want one leveling system throughout the whole year of the game that I can grind throughout the whole year. That adds more of a sense of accomplishment for me, which really incentivizes me to keep playing and grinding the game. There's really no end goal until after the game cycle is over and they cap out the level like what they're doing with Call of Duty Vanguard right now, where they're capping the level at 2500. It's just really a sucky system for all players, honestly. I see no positive reasons to it. I don't see any improvement of the game from this prestige system. I just don't see how it could be better compared to traditional prestiging. But now we're gonna move down to some of the smaller details of the game, starting with gunshots not showing up on the minimap. Obviously, everyone's heard about this. Once again, it is a change that was made for no productive, no improving reason at all. And the sad thing is, is everyone expressed their dislikes about this feature back in Modern Warfare 2019, but Infinity Ward made the executive decision to add it back despite a large majority of the player base having complaints about it. It really just messes with the flow of the game and incentivizes players to play really campy since you can't see where gunfights are happening on the minimap. And it's just something, you know, no one's had a problem with it for the past 15 years of Call of Duty having a minimap. And all of a sudden in Modern Warfare 2019 and this year, they're like, oh, we know better. We're going to change it. But anyway, another weird decision they decided to make was removing the nameplates from above the enemy's heads. This was a complaint in the beta, so they did add a red like dot above enemies' heads, but it's still pretty hard to see especially for people with bad eyesight like myself. It's really difficult to make out an enemy at long distances because they blend in with the terrain on most maps. Two prime examples
examples of this would be the head glitch on the fruit stands in the Mercado Las Almas map, along with people hiding in the grassy spawns on El Asilo. Whenever I'm at those long range lines of sights, there's always just someone head glitched, someone mounted on the fruit stand, someone prone in the grass, and I can't see them because there's no nameplate above their head. Not one person has ever in the history of Call of Duty multiplayer complained about nameplates, but once again, Infinity Ward made the unnecessary decision to remove them. Now that's kind of just my simple little review over the launch of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. We're obviously going to see more changes as the game evolves down the road, but overall Modern Warfare 2 is an improvement over Modern Warfare 2019 in terms of gameplay and fun. They just unfortunately brought some stuff that made Modern Warfare 2019 a drag and put it into this game, even though the community has clearly spoken out about these things. It unfortunately launched incomplete and could easily be a top 5 Call of Duty game if things that are supposed to already be in the game at launch will make their way into the game maybe starting around season one. I will stand by my description of Modern Warfare 2 having fun gameplay and being a solid foundation for a great game, but there's really just nothing built on that foundation making it a great game. But season one starts next week and that is probably going to be like the actual launch of Modern Warfare 2. Right now I still feel like we're in some weird beta stage just with camos added into it. But like I said, hopefully all the launch content will be released with season one next week. Let me know your thoughts on the launch of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer in the comments below. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.